Hey, this is Chuck from Metawani, and I am talking to Lenny and Joseph from Sanctuary. How are you guys doing? Good. Awesome. Okay. So, you guys just got done kicking some ass in Detroit. Um, how has the tour been overall for you guys as far as uh, from an emotional perspective, given the fact that it should have been a, you know, a celebration of the resurgence of Sanctuary with Worrell, and then Worrell passed away. Um, now it's become this really touching tribute. Uh, how's it been for you guys personally? It's been kind of a, a bit of a bittersweet thing. Um, and, but at the same time, you know, I, I mean, I think we've all had a, a really good time. Uh, maybe too good of a time, as you can tell by my voice. <laughs> Injury so, prone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 there's been broken a lot of talking and lame. screaming, and he's broke a finger, and we played a few stages that were a little tight, and it was a little hard to get around on and stuff right. like that. But uh, it's a really good time, and people have uh, really been positive. Um, they're really responding well to Joseph, and I think a lot of, a lot of people were very um, excited to see that we still did the tour because I know I, I, I talked to a lot of fans that were right. like, well, you know, we, we bought tickets because we wanted to come see you guys as, as well as, as Ice Earth and everything. And, and some of them were kind of disappointed when they heard, you know, obviously the news about War and that maybe we weren't going to do the tour and everything. Um, but it seems like, you know, everybody we talked to was really um, excited that we were actually doing the tour even though World passed away. Yeah. And Joseph has been, in my opinion, He's been nailing it um, every night, you know. Uh, you know, uh, it, which for me was kind of a concern, you know, and um, for him as well, I'm sure. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I, it, I had a really great time, and, and uh, tomorrow's our last day. Yeah. I'm a little bummed out about it being being the last day because I feel like we're really kind of getting into our groove. Right. We're, we're coming into our stride and. You know, not that the whole thing wasn't great, but this last 10 days or so, I, I feel like we've just been knocking it around the park, you know. So it's, it's, been, a, it's been a cool tour. And Ice Earth, they have been so supportive, and uh, John Schaefer especially, he kind of, uh, I mean, we're, we're, I think, we're close now, you know. <laughs> That's we're, cool. We're great friends, and um, he's been great to all of us, all of Ice Earth as well. Yeah. You know, we're, we feel like we're um, really close with them. And of course, you know Jake as well. You know, and right. So well, yeah, I was going to ask, yeah. like, you know, since Jake and you are in uh, Witherfall, mm -hmm. um, have you guys been trying to slip in your music on the bus so that everybody has to hear No, your no. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> and that's how this whole thing, uh, the whole thing coalesced was, uh, you know, Jake. Jake's been doing Ice Earth for about a year now. He's got a few tours, a mm -hmm. bunch of festivals, a record under his belt. And we were actually writing together when World died at like 7 a.m. our time in L.A. And i always been a huge fan of World. And I actually was going to go to a few shows on this tour and <laughs> just hang out with Jake and yeah. meet these guys again. I, I met them once before. Uh -huh. um, and when it when it happened, we were just like, well, what the fuck are we going to do now? And, yeah. You know, like, and I didn't hear a word till like, New Year's Eve, you know? And then Schaefer kind of, like, gave Lenny, like, he gave me a little reference and said, that, you know, Jake Singer, Joseph Witherfall could probably do it if yeah. he was into it. And if you guys still want to do it. And, right. You know, of course I, I was honored to fucking do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, we really weren't sure. We really weren't sure what was going to happen. And, you know, it was kind of a... Uh, I was I was basically calling John on New Year's Eve to say, look, man, you know, a couple weeks has passed, and we, we, we thought about finding somebody, and we talked to a couple people that we thought maybe could step in, but it didn't really work out. Yeah. And um, I just said, hey, do you have any ideas, you know, before before I call it a day? And he's like, well, I do. You know, I, oh, cool. He's like... You got to talk to Joseph Michael of Witherfall. He's in a band with our other guitar player, Jake. And I, honestly, I said, well, I've never heard of him, but I'll check it out and uh, listen to it. And um, I was I, I, I was a fan instantly when I heard <laughs> it. I was like, wow, this is shit I can really get into. Yeah. You know, it's crazy progressive shit, but 
You know, it's, I, actually, yeah, I remember it's, thinking to myself, "It's fucking I wish, awesome." I wish Joseph <laughs> would sing more because there was, there was, there was, I mean, some of those songs were like seven minutes long. Right. There's like ten. There's like, there yeah. like two minutes of singing. You know. Yeah. And I was like, God, this guy's a great singer. Dryer's just noodling away. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. But <laughs> Bass player. Sometimes I'd be like, Oh man, that was a little too much. Maybe they need to. You know. But right. anyway, you know, so I was, <laughs> you know, I thought it was c cool stuff, and uh, I was really impressed. Uh, Joseph and I got to talking, and um, we hit it off. So um, that's rare, I think. Sometimes, mm. you know, and um, you know, the rest is history at this point, and um, I yeah. think it's going well. So. Cool. So yeah, I, I mean, kind of into that that mode. I mean, I, I it has to be devastating when Worrell passed away. Yeah. You know, the the loss of somebody that's been with you for so long. Um, what was kind of the catalyst when you, you know, if you were going through, like, checking out some other singers, what was the catalyst to say, you know, I'm not going to cancel the tour, I'm going to keep this going, and I'm going to make it a tribute to him? Part of it was very sensitive for me. I kind of, I didn't even really want it. At first I was, I just didn't even know if I wanted to go there. But the businessman side of me and the fact that we had already kind of had the ball rolling. Right. was kind of like, well... You know, maybe we should entertain at least checking it out. I didn't want to do anything like where I was, where we just said, "Hey, put the word out." We want to just find somebody. We wanted to find someone that we could work with and do it with respect, and not do some kind of like, "Hey, we're doing some massive search for the right thing." Right. Because I didn't just didn't think that would be appropriate. Um, so we were very careful, and I mean, still, um, you know, there's part of me that, you know, I feel like we did the right thing, but, you know, you don't really know. Yeah. You know, you don't really know at first. Yeah. And um, Joseph and I talked about it on the phone, too, and we, we, we agreed that we weren't going to we weren't gonna go any farther unless we could do it with respect. Right. And, you know, what, we talked to the Iced Earth Camp and management and everything, and we talked about how we wanted to do this. And we wanted to make it feel right. And if we couldn't, um, we weren't going to go any further. And once I started working with Joseph, I felt confident that we could do it justice. And I think he did as well. And I let Ice to Earth know and the management and everything. And, and I, I think, I, I think, I think we are doing it justice. You know, you never really know until you're out there. And I, I, I can tell you, and you probably agree that. From the crowd reaction and um, what people uh, say to us when we're when we're done, that they they really feel like um, it's it's a good representation. Yeah, and we've we've done moral respect and we've done it with respect. Um, so so I think we did it right. Yeah, you know, I I, and I think a lot of people agree. You know, so yeah. Well, I mean, even before I saw the show, um, you know, I'd read. All these, I, I'd seen some fan footage of you know Joseph like just nailing the 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 vocal qualities of Worrell, but it was respectful and it was very you know it was just spot on. So when you were preparing for this, like to you know to do these songs, um, what was going through your mind as far as like preparing your mind to sing this music? Um, well, I didn't have much time, so. I had to really, and this I think we, we rubbed a little bit, is I had to trust my process. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was not worried about the range or getting a lot of the tones, because I'm yeah. a bit of a chameleon, if you listen to all my past work. Um, but it was convincing Lenny, really, <laughs> that, yeah. listen, I, I'm not going to be anywhere near where you're going to be comfortable with this until like a week before. Like, yeah. And it was really like... You know, <laughs> we, 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 we really test each other's uh, trust right. on this, and I'm glad it worked out, because I think that, uh, I mean, the result really just speaks for itself. It's, oh, I know. It's... It, we, are, we are really tight live band, and the tribute, like, forget about how great the band sounds and whatever you think of me and my performance, like, as a tribute. It's it's hit the mark. Like I think I mean I've seen people crying in the audience. Like I've seen people mouthing the words with their 
like hands right. on their chest. You know, yeah. what I mean? like as far as that goes, yeah. Like I think, I mean, I have had countless people come up to me, and say, "Man, you did world justice. I'm so happy you guys decided to do this." And then, I mean, that was that was the whole goal from the get go. Right. Like I knew, as soon as John Schaefer sent me a text message that I can do this. Yeah. I, I got this. Um, and I would not have taken the, the job if I didn't think I could. Right. I would have said no right off the bat. There's not enough time. There's not enough. Yeah. I, on the other hand, am always very skeptical. You know? <laughs> well, so. It's not a small order. It's, <laughs> no. not, it's not, you know, Neil Diamond no. tribute. Right, right. It's not right. Yeah. Sanctuary World Day. Like. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I was, I was, um, I, there was a little bit of faith involved. Right. You know, and and I'm not really that guy sometimes. It's like I kind of have to see the tangible parts. You know what I mean? So it's hard for me to just go you know, listen to somebody say, don't worry right. about right, it. Right. It's yeah. going to all be fine. I'm, I was like, sending him demos before I even knew the lyrics. That's how fucking <laughs> how, how tenuous the whole thing was. But, in the but that's the one thing is I can tell when, when someone gives me something and I tell them to change this or do that or work with yeah. And that's the kind of people I like to work with, and Joseph is that guy. When when we talked about, hey, you know, just try this, let's change this, let's do this. He's he's one of those. He's a team player in that in that sense that he it, it he he could make it he could mold it he could make it work. Right. So there was a point where I was like, okay, I can jump into the rest of it with faith, and I I, I know I've got somebody that I can work with here. Right. Um, I, I knew I had the abilities going in, but the the main thing is I really fucking cared. Like I gave a huge fucking I gave a shit, you know. I mean, yeah. I did. I told Lenny in the, our first conversation, like, listen, man, like, there are guys maybe that can do this. But I know I can do this, and I fucking care. Like I well, really and, do. And for a singer, it's I, I told him right from the beginning, and he knows this too. He doesn't need me to tell him, but yeah, you're the guy they're coming after. You know what I mean? If, if right, you yeah. don't do it right, yeah, they're you, not looking at me. Right, they're yeah. looking at If you, you fuck it up, it's on yeah, you. <laughs> so you have to. You have to I was steady from the you're, beginning. Yeah, <laughs> you're, the one, you're the one who's going to get the criticism. So. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's... I, I was blown away because um, I've been a fan of, of Sanctuary since, you know, Refuge Denied. And um, a huge fan of, of World's work in Nevermore. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I bought tickets for the show based on the fact, I mean, I'm a huge Ice Earth fan, but yeah. Sanctuary is my band, and I, I wanted to see you guys, and then, you know, when Worrell passed away, I was I was, I was, was a little worried, I didn't know what was going to happen, but you knocked it out of the park, man, I, I gotta say, it was fantastic. So, Lenny, um, in an interview in 2017, you mentioned that you were like 80% done with some new material that you'd been working on with Worrell. Um, did you get a chance to do any recording with him before he passed away? No. Oh. He he the way he the way him and I would work was a lot of times, you know, I would come up with a lot of the ideas as in a basic sense. Mm -hmm. The band would get together, then we would record kind of a really good version of it live. Um, and, it, and it's not just all about me. Those guys deserve credit too. Yeah. Dave Budville and George Hernandez. Those guys, you know, they help me immensely. Believe me. But once that we got to that point, what we would do is we would hand off the stuff to Worrell, and Worrell was working on it. And you know, I know how Worrell works. He has it has a lot up here, and he has it um, kind of written down, and he right. he would, like make little recordings for himself. Usually we wouldn't hear it until nearly the end. <laughs> so he did have a lot of stuff done, but we never really heard it. And uh -huh. that's kind of the way it was with the year the sun died. A lot of stuff we didn't hear until almost almost the end. So we weren't really there. And, and, and part of that was because um, he was working with his other band from Brazil. And he was working on stuff kind of simultaneously. Yeah. And we agreed that he would just kind of halt all the stuff for Sanctuary because what was really going on with him was that he would get kind of, he would have his head in two different spaces, you know what I mean? Right. And it was kind of confusing and, you know, he didn't want to kind of cross-contaminate anything, I guess. Yeah. I don't know if that's the right, you know, way yeah. to say that. Um, so, 
he had a lot of ideas and a lot of things going on, but he wanted to finish that, and so I never heard any, okay. unfortunately. Uh, so what? We have a lot of music. Yeah. We have a lot of music. Yes. We have a lot of vocal stuff. So, so uh, I mean, given the fact that he's passed away, this tour is ending. Um, what's next for you? Are you are you just gonna? Um, I guess are you gonna do new music with Joseph or what's Joseph what's the and plan? I are talking about it. Joseph has has some of the um, songs that we were working on, and we're gonna see what where we go from there. You know? All right. Um, you know, I mean, this isn't a secret. But yeah. Live is different than studio. Joseph right. knows as well. So we'll see. We're having a great time live. I can right. tell you that. I mean, him and I are hitting it off. We have a good time up there every night. <laughs> he nails it. And, and I think there's been a new... And I, I hate to say this because, I mean, I absolutely adored World more than more than anyone will ever know. You know he's been my uh, music partner for a very long time. And I never, I never really thought about writing with someone else. But now in this situation, Joseph has kind of breathed new life into the band. We've been able to play some songs that we don't normally play with Worrell and stuff. Because, you know, in Worrell's later years, yep. there's some things going on with his voice and his health and all that stuff. Yep. Although he was still an amazing um, vocalist and writer and everything, there was just some things that we shied away from doing. Right. And now that Joseph is in the band, um, he has kind of a different range that's that's available to him. So we, we've been trying some other stuff. So it's kind of breathed a new uh, energy into the band. So that's been really cool for us. Um, so, you know, we're, we're moving forward and... When you agree, we're having a really good time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're having a fucking amazing time live. It's honestly like my favorite tour so far awesome. in, in my my uh, multi-decade span. As a musician. <laughs> uh, I won't tell you how old I am, so fuck off. Um, but uh, you know, you know what it is with writing. It's it's like it happens or it doesn't. Like you, like I'm not the kind of guy who's just going to throw some shit on top of it yeah. and be like, well, I want to be on a Sanctuary record, so, like, eat this. Right. Like, I want to be inspired. Like, I've been listening to this stuff for a week or so now, and, and I have I have a few ideas. Um, you know, and, and it's a different way for uh, working for me. Like, yeah. usually, like, I'm, like, in, like, like right there when it happens and we right. just build it all there. Like these guys like to demo ideas and toss stuff, throw like throw stuff out, bring in new stuff. I'm like, okay, all right. Like, well, so I mean, my job in the next few weeks when I get back home and pet my cat and make sure he doesn't commit suicide on the front balcony is uh, I'm gonna lay demos down for them um, based on what they have, and then we'll probably swap some things back and forth and awesome. see if it's amazing if it's not then we'll call it a day and maybe right. do another tour or, or like some festivals and keep right. the tribute going right. but if it's amazing I, I don't think that there's any reason why we shouldn't put out some music if it's amazing if, yeah. if the songs are great yeah they should live and, yeah and, and one thing we can do i mean uh, joseph and i are enough of accomplished musicians that i think we can i know the way I wrote stuff for Worrell is I I tailored it to the way he sang and thought about things. Mm -hmm. So I'm so used to doing that. Maybe we can we can also modify on the way we do things for each other as well. Mm -hmm. So once I once we get you know I mean we have time. So right. Like yeah. I, I look you know originally we were going to try and put this out um, in 2018, but obviously. Considering yeah. what's what's happened, I, I I think that's all off the table. I'm not really worried about when it comes out. I would like it to come out, and if it can come out with this group of people, it will. But I'm not going to say when. I you know I'm fine with taking a couple of years because sometimes you have to kind of build your um, way of writing with a new person. Right. So, right. I mean I've I've written with some other people besides Wall. And um, I kind of know what to do. When I, once I find that person's where, where they lock in, I know what to do. Right. And 
you're probably the same way. You, you, it's 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 per certain situation. You know? To me, right. it's per like peace. Like I I identify. Like one of the funniest things with with this whole situation was the one of the last songs Lenny told me we were playing on this tour was the year the sun died. Like maybe like. Ten days before yeah. the first rehearsal, and it was the first song I had lyrically memorized, even though I had had the other songs for weeks and weeks and weeks. Right? Like it's just like I don't I don't have rules or a structure like for how I write or how I memorize things. Like I just let it wash over me and whatever hits me, and, like you know, gut checks me, and right. fucking stabs me in the heart, and yeah. like takes over my fucking consciousness. Like that's what I work on. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, I have a couple of things that he sent me, and they're probably unexpected for him. Too. <laughs> like, that it really, like, wow, I have this. Like, yeah. I have this. I'm gonna send, I'm, like I said, when I get home, I'm going to send him some stuff, and we'll see see how it goes. If he likes it, then, then we're on the right track. Cool. Awesome. So uh, I just got one more question for, for each of you. Um, what is your favorite breakfast food? Ha! <laughs> Oh. <laughs> is this a plate? Yeah, or is it could be like one implement. Of it plate? can be whatever the fuck you want. I like a very rare sirloin uh, with over easy eggs, like really runny, <laughs> and Tabasco. That's it. Wow, nice. That's what I like to eat. Awesome. So I love like when I make myself breakfast. This is what I make. <laughs> and I do this every now and then. I probably do this, you know. When I you rarely, cook? I rarely eat <laughs> breakfast, but I eat breakfast on the weekends sometimes, like twice a month probably. And what I do is I take three eggs mm -hmm. and I cook them over easy. And I usually make some bacon and some maple sausage links. All like right. That. And then I put like, um, I have like this uh, kind of like a, what do you call that? The green... Um, oh, the green chili? Yeah, it's more of like a green uh, sauce. Uh, what do you call that? Um, uh, salsa yeah. verde? Yes, exactly. I like that on there. And um, and I don't, generally don't eat a lot of toast and stuff. I kind of do more of like a low carb. Thing. Yeah. But I love that stuff. Awesome, man. Sounds what good. What I'm eating... <laughs> yeah, I love hash browns. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well. Got to throw some potatoes on there, man. I like home fries like, yeah. when I'm eating carbs. That's what they call them in upstate. You know? Yeah, home fries, home man. Fries, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell With yeah. the skins and all. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, leave the skins yeah. on, man. Skin. Don't peel That's that fucking potato. Yeah. Come on, god you damn. You want to talk about dinner, though. <laughs> oh, all right, Lord. let's go into dinner. Yeah, let's go into yeah. dinner. I, yeah, I love, I'm a pretty good barbecue cook, and I, there's a lot of stuff I, I can't cook that well, but I can cook a lot of barbecue really good. So. <laughs> we talked about this for the next tour. Yeah. We're gonna drag like a smoker. Around. A smoker around, nice. So we don't have to go to bullshit yeah. restaurants yeah. and eat garbage. Just make your own fucking smoke. Yeah. I'm pretty good at it. I mean, over the years, I've gotten pretty good at. The <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of times when band, bands will come into town, uh, like Insomnium and uh, Crowbar and a couple other bands, I've actually made a giant barbecue spread for oh, them. Oh no and shit! I'll bring it down to their bus and I'll feed them all. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it and. Uh, some smoked brisket and yeah oh. well usually i do like i do a gigantic thing of wings uh -huh. i do a gigantic thing of uh, pulled pork nice. sometimes brisket and stuff his like friends that. eat better yeah. than his band yeah <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so awesome well hey guys i really appreciate you taking the time to talk Thank with you. me it's so good to uh, you, you guys are fucking awesome and uh i can't wait to see what the future holds yeah we're yeah. looking forward to it awesome thanks a lot guys right. cheers